random encounters. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited, like thinking about it. Real quick, I just want to say thank you for 100 subscribers. Um, this video was made a little bit late or published a little bit late, so forgive me for that. We will have a 100 subscriber special pretty soon, so look forward to that. We'll also be making a Discord pretty soon. I will keep I'll keep mentioning that, but um, enjoy the video. Love you guys. Thank you so much for 100. Hey guys, Lucas and Billy here, the Musashi Boys, and today we are talking about a new Pokemon game and what we want. Like a Pokemon game after Pokemon Arceus and some of the new mechanics that really refresh what the series is. To reformulate and just to create a new formula for the Pokemon series. It's played it safe enough now and I think it's time that because Arceus is coming out, it's taking Pokemon in a new direction that I think everyone would like, right? Let's talk about that. But before we start talking about that, make sure you guys like the video, comment. We would love it if you guys could like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Please do that. And now, let's go on to our first point. The first thing that we want to talk about is to scrap random encounters forever. In the most recent remake, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, because it was such a faithful remake, they did go back to having random encounters. I don't think that's a bummer for that generation, but now as we move forward to reinvent the Pokemon formula, I think random encounters should just not be a thing anymore. It's just not fun for users to play, and trying to anticipate random Pokemon jumping at you could be infuriating sometimes, you know? When I played the games, it just kind of honestly felt a little bit like blow, and I just feel like there's other ways of making random encounters within an open world, which is like any other game, right? You're just walking down the road and then there's some monster that attacks you and aggros and you can choose whether you want to run or you know what, maybe I need the XP, maybe I want this Pokemon, blah, 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 and you fight it. So I think that would be just a more fun aspect of the game, just not having random encounters anymore. Just do it like how they did with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Just keep it like that, probably for the rest of the series, please. We appreciate that change, but we just would like to reiterate it. Next on our list is having actual arena style combat, but of course simplified because there is a lot of Pokemon. So a good example of this would be Tales of Arise. Basically in Tales of Arise, you have live combat, you don't take turns at all, you have small combos, and then you'll do special attacks that are kind of like how Pokemon have their special attacks, right? You would just have an encounter, right? It would put you into an uh, arena, and then you would fight, and each Pokemon would maybe have all their normal moves would be turned into specials within the live action. And I think that's a great idea because traditional turn-based RPGs, it's not that they're not fun anymore, but I just feel like most of the originality has gone away with these newer types of games, like Bravely Default, Shin Megami Tensei 5, all those are doing, I feel like, better jobs than Pokemon. And so, how would they reinvent it? Instead of doing turn-based, you would put them in arenas, make them have like a normal attack, and like Lucas was saying, instead of like arts from the Tales of series, a famous JRPG classic series, those arts would be your special moves, you know? You don't have to have four, but maybe like at least two would be great. That included with a slight hack and slash type of combat system and including type weaknesses for specials, that would be awesome. Yes, I would love that. Oh, you're getting excited. I'm getting excited like thinking about it. The thing is, keep it simple. Obviously children play these games. We're not trying to have some children be like, I'm, I'm What the no no? <laughs> um, yeah, that's true. And third point is banging music, banger music. And I think that for most RPGs, music plays a big role into the experience. It, it comes along with you on your adventure and fitting music goes a long way. Pokemon has been doing a pretty decent to great job when they make music, but we want banger, banger, music for this open world new formula pokemon game add in some orchestrals that are epic add in some symphonies add in some melancholy sadness add in all these emotions that you would have in typical rpg fashion and i feel like that would make the adventure so much more immense and immersive yeah you gotta hit us from every angle hit us with the nostalgia hit them with the the new remixes of the old songs hit us with the new songs hit us with Every, the, the main theme that you'll forever, for the rest of your life, when you hear it, you'll think, this, this Pokemon game, that was that game. Oh, I remember when they started those open world games. <laughs> it would be awesome. Next, really quick, just make the whole game open world. A true open world. 
We like what they did with Sword and Shield when they had the wild areas. It had that big arena where you just go around, catch Pokemon. That's it, that gave us a glimpse, basically, of how open world tastes. With Arceus and Ancient Sinnoh and how that looks, that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Now give us a better open world than that, an original one at that. That would yeah. be awesome. And hopefully with new Switch hardware, when assuming, obviously with Arceus, another Pokemon open world game would probably take a while. So hopefully by the time that comes out, the Switch has 1080p, and then it can be really nice. This is a really good graphical fidelity. And you know how they're gonna get that graphical fidelity? We actually made a video about a new Switch Pro or a new Nintendo console system. We're gonna link it up here. Hopefully you guys watch it, so check that out for us. And before we go on to our next two points, we have two points left. We want you guys to please like the video. We appreciate you guys watching this far. Five likes would be nice. And please subscribe because 80% of you guys are subscribed and we're trying to get 100. It would really help build the community. And the next point is make evolutions more dynamic. For me, as a more casual Pokemon fan, and I've only played one or two Pokemon games, the big turnoff for me was the fact that certain things in the games always felt a little linear, right? Like you said, there's other turn-based games that kind of just do things better, like Persona, right? Oh. And so, <laughs> I'm not saying we have to make it extremely complex, I'm just saying make the evolutions a little more dynamic. Just how Eevee has multiple elements, not every Pokemon needs that, but maybe make it like a tree where there's the first evolution, then the last evolution has two different variants. And you don't even need to make every Pokemon have two variants. Some can have three, some can have no variants. Just mix it up a little bit so we have something more to like plan on and look forward to. There's a squid Pokemon that when they reach a certain level, you actually just flip your screen upside down at that certain level and it evolves. That's insane, I love that. Hopefully they make something like that for maybe a couple Pokemon, obviously, right? They could think of all these unique ways to evolve Pokemon and make them more dynamic. Yeah. As long as they explain them to the user. Yeah, you can have crazy things. You have like two Pokemon fuse, like, and you, you just find this out, no one even tells you. You just find out, like, what? These two Pokemon by party have a fusion button. What's that? Boom, and it fuses into a legendary. Right? There's so many creative ways. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that sounds incredible. Can you imagine as a kid? What the? <laughs> that's, that's like Persona. No, we gotta make it a little bit more simple, but, right? Yeah, you, you, I'm just saying, there's all sorts of ideas basically out there that you can do. Can you imagine, dude? <laughs> you said that, I was like, what are you saying? <laughs> and the last point on our list is to have more variety in regards to Pokemon traversal mechanics. So that can mean either it's flying, when you're surfing, riding a bike, all those different types of options are more meaningful to the game now. Because it's more open world, I feel like they're a little bit more significant. You give them maybe more speed, more control, let the user do more. Let's say you have a flying Pokemon and you use fly. We would like it so that you have full control over that Pokemon while you fly. They kind of did this in Oras or Omega Ruby Sapphire, whatever that generation was. And when you use the flute, and then you got onto the legendary Pokemon, you were able to fly around, but on like a distinct flat plane. You, you couldn't really adjust your altitude that much. How about you give us more control so that maybe that once we do get fly, we can go to more end game areas, or we can go on top of the volcano, yeah. or we, we can go to Sky Island or something like that. And the same goes for swim. We don't have to have multiple skills just to swim, dive, do waterfall, all these different things. How about just make it simple, have surf, you can dive underwater and things like that with the Pokemon. That would be so cool. That would be amazing. And big thing is don't make it necessary though, right? You don't, we don't want any slave Pokemon. We don't want any Pokemon that are going to be like, I have to have this Pokemon in my party because I need him to fly me across this whole open world. Just have it so that it's something fun to use in an end game. It may become kind of important, but never so much of an emphasis that it can take away actually from the combat, from the main mechanics of the game. Right, that's the big thing, right? We, we want these mechanics to be add-ons and to add extra content for post-game or end game, right? Having it not necessary for the main game, very important to us because we don't want young Pokemon masters out there getting lost or confused as to what they're doing anymore, you know? We want it more streamlined. And one point that I actually just thought of right now that's not on our list is what if they had little peaceful areas that could almost be a mimic Pokemon Snap, right? So you go on to uh, an Orca Pokemon and you go underwater, you get to see all these Pokemon 
doing this cool, you know, different things and you can take pictures of them. Just integrating a little bit of Pokemon Snap just, you know, could be a, a nice extra thing because it, obviously what is the key part of open worlds? They give you all a variation of things to do and just little side things, just like how Witcher had Gwent. It, the card game wasn't a main thing of the game, it was just a nice little extra thing. So that was our list for a new Pokemon game and what it would be like if they refreshed the game just like Mario Odyssey or any of those other Nintendo open world games. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a like, subscribe, maybe ring the bell. We just would like to hit 100 very bad and comment down below what you would like from a new Pokemon game and what kind of content are you guys enjoying on our channel because we want to know what you guys think that's what's most important to us. And then one more thing actually, we're thinking of starting a Discord server soon so if you guys would like to be a part of that or would like to chat with us sometime, uh, we're thinking of creating that. So just let us know if that's something you're interested in and we can try and set that up. You know, I think that's the best way to contact you guys and just, you know, let you guys know what we're up to. You know, as a community. See you guys. Peace.